So you talked about other tests as well and, and some that you mm -hmm. use. Can you talk about some that might help uh, down the road in, in diagnosing and determining any conditions? So other, other tests for prostate cancer that can help? Sure. Absolutely. Wow. Hope we're hoping enough memory. <laughs> so here we go. So first you have the PSA itself. Mm -hmm. um, the PSA test, as long as it's a clear number, that could be helpful. The next is you get multiple PSAs, as we said, and that's not necessarily a test, but it's a way of using it called a PSA velocity, which is how quickly is it increasing. Essentially, if it goes over a point per year, it's kind of a problem. Mm. Okay, two points per year, you know, we send the dogs after you. It's kind of more of a concern, but you, that's a way to utilize it. Then we have what's called the PSA density. The density is when you get the size of the gland, hence an ultrasound machine, you can get the volume. The larger the prostate, the higher the PSA normally would be. So yeah. if you have a normal sized prostate, you know, and your PSA is high, that's a problem. But if you have a large prostate, what's the problem? The, the real problem is that most urologists will not pay to get an ultrasound done to find the volume to determine if that number is, rel is normal for you. So you run mm -hmm. it into the system issue again. Also, there's a test called the percent free PSA, which is another test that the Mayo Clinic came up with years ago, which is a qualitative indicator. So the regular PSA says, all we know is in your blood, we found this PSA that's high. Who knows why? You could have gone bull riding as far as we know. And that's true. Well, uh, we see cowboys and rodeo guys. The number one bull in Arizona a few years ago, his name was Dr. Proctor. <laughs> kind of sums <laughs> up about what it does to your PSA. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to look at that, but the percent free PSA says of your PSA, what's the percent chance that your normal PSA is coming from cancer versus something else like Dr. Proctor. So that's a qualitative tool that's available and your regular lab can run it. Most people are not aware of it. There's another test called the PAP, the prostatic acid phosphatase. And it's the male PAP, not the female <laughs> PAP. I know what guys think, no probes, but it's simply a blood test. And this is the old PSA test. Well, I should say it's the test of PSA substituted. Um, the reason we got rid of it is that that test is only elevated when the cancer has already gotten out or has grown legs. Mm. And that the PSA was supposed to replace that. Of course, the PSA has so many false positives, it's not very useful. But the PAP, it is useful when someone has a PSA close to 10 or there's cancer in their family and they're concerned. So that's another test to kind of augment the PSA. Ultimately, there's another test that I want to keep uh, you know, boring you with this, but there's many options. The, probably the most promising test right now, and we have patients that fly to my office, uh, well, for our service, but even for this one test, the PCA3 stands for Prostate Cancer Antigen 3. And it's the first in the line of, uh, of, of molecular uh, DNA marker tests. So you're going to see more of these in other areas of cancer, not just prostate cancer. But what it's looking for is it's a functional genomic test, not a diagnostic. Diagnostic means that when you hear genetic test, it means someone has the gene for prostate mm -hmm. cancer or the gene for baldness, which I think I inherited, whatever it might be. But a functional di a, a genomic test is one where it says when you a certain functional uh, a, a, a reaction is occurring. So when there is a cancer there, that cancer tends to produce DNA that's associated with that cancer. So you're seeing a whole new line of tests that are tracking DNA that is new to certain body systems or to mm. cancers. So the first was the PCA3, and it is by itself, by most recent standards, 65 to 75% reliable to positively mm. predict prostate cancer on an individual test. And of course, as we just discussed, the PSA is abysmal. One PSA doesn't tell you anything. Mm -hmm. You need multiple tests. So the PCA3 is the closest we have to a one-off test. And uh, Mayo Clinic and other, other uh, uh, urologists would use that test when they knew you had prostate cancer. Everyone in your family died of it. Your PSA is 15. You could feel it with your finger. It almost ate your finger off. All this happens, and the biopsy comes back negative. Now what do you do? You're the doctor. You know it's there, but now that patient's leaving and he's a walking lawsuit because you didn't catch it. And if the patient refuses to come back and have another biopsy, 
then they might accuse you that you didn't do your job right. This actually happens. So this test would be authorized for $1,400 for this test to make sure that the, the doctor knew whether or not he had it or not. Mm. I call it the Pontius Pilate test. It was a way to cleanse the doctor's hands of lawsuits. Mm. So you see that there's a business of medicine as well, and so the, the tracking and these tests we're talking about kind of interplay. Mm. But that's the PCA3. Um, other tests you can do that are a little simpler, a urine, a urinalysis. Just check one's urine. Find out, is there bacteria in the urine? If you find evidence of bacteria through different means, uh, white blood cell count, blood, mm. this sort of thing, that could suggest a non-cancerous etiology or cause. You know, because if there's infection, an infection makes the PSA go up. So there's, mm. there's simpler ways to find. And it actually, uh, one other test is simply find out how well a man pees put it bluntly. Mm -hmm. you know, when men come in and they have peeing problems, I'm happy. I'm ecstatic. Now, my medical students say it's because I, you know, I like, it's good for business having guys with peeing problems. But the real reason is because the more problems you have, the more it suggests you do not have prostate cancer. Because mm. cancer is insidious. You don't know you have it. Hides out. That's the problem. But BPH, which is an enlarged prostate, or prostatitis, which is an inflamed or infected prostate, both of those give symptoms. So when the PSA goes up, I, I want to see all, I want to see that patient go to the bathroom five times. I'm happy. He's not, but I am. Hmm. So those are some of the tests we have.